The Sign of the Beaver, Chapter 20 For the next few days, Matt waited eagerly. Early in the morning, he finished his chores so that, at a word from Atian, he would be ready to set out for the Indian village again. But Atian did not come. Matt resolved to be patient, but day by day, his new confidence began to slide away. Perhaps he had only imagined that he had passed a test. In Atian's eyes, perhaps he had failed. It was a week before Atian came, and the moment Matt saw him, he knew that there would be no invitation. The Indian boy was solemn and unsmiling, looking more like his grandfather than ever before. He sat staring at the book Matt opened, his mind plainly miles away. He did not want to listen to the story. He seemed to have forgotten the words he had learned the week before. I not remember, he said impatiently. My grandfather teach me many things. What sort of things? Atian did not answer. Time of hunt, come soon, he said finally. Matt felt suddenly hopeful. Perhaps it was not any failure of his own that had caused Atian to stay away. Every year, Atian had told him when the leaves had fallen from the trees, the Indians hunted the caribou and the great moose. Whole families moved away from the village to follow the trails of the big animals. Matt knew that more than anything in the world, Atian longed to hunt with the men. He could imagine now how Atian must have been staying close to his grandfather these last days, trying to be useful and to prove that he was fit to be one of them. I not come tomorrow, Atian added. Maybe a long time. You're going on the hunt, Matt tried hard to keep the envy out of his voice. Atian shook his head. I go to find my Manitou. Matt was puzzled. Was Manitou another word for moose? Maybe you call spirit, Atian explained. All Indian boy must have a Manitou. It is time for me. But how can you find a spirit? For a moment, Matt thought this was one of Atian's odd jokes, but he had never seen his friend so serious, even troubled. My grandfather teach me, Atian repeated. Manitou, come in, dream. Then, seeing that Matt was not laughing, that he really wanted to understand, Atian went on, trying to explain in his clumsy English a mystery that could not truly be explained at all. Every Indian boy must have a Manitou, he said, before he could take his place as one of the men of his family. He had to find it for himself. No one could help him. His grandfather had been training him for many days. He'd had to learn many things. Now he must make the test. He would go out into the forest alone. First, he would make special preparation, bathe himself carefully, and take a special medicine to make him clean inside and out. Then he would go far into the forest and build himself a wigwam of branches. He would stay there alone for many days. He would not eat anything at all, even berries. After sundown, he would drink a little water from a brook. He would sing the songs that his grandfather had taught him and repeat the ancient prayers of his people so that his heart would be worthy. If he did all this, if he waited faithfully, one day his Manitou would come to him. Then he could go back to his village. He would have a new name. He would be a man and a hunter. What would it be like, this Manitou? Matt questioned. There was no way to know, Atian told him. It could come in many ways. In a dream, he might see a bird or an animal or even a tree. He might not see anything at all. Instead, he might hear a voice speaking to him. There would be no mistake. When it came, Atian would recognize that it was meant for him. What if the Manitou should not come? Instantly, Matt was ashamed of his question. A dark shadow had crossed Atian's face. There was something in his eyes that Matt had never seen there before. Sadness, and more than that, fear. I wait, Matian said, till he come. I can never be a hunter.
Matt could think of nothing at all to say. He felt shut away from his friend in a way that even the boy's scorn had never made him feel. This was something he could not understand or share. If he finds his Manitou, he thought, he will go with the men. He may never come here again. You'll come back afterwards, won't you? He asked anxiously, though he knew in his heart that it would never be the same. I come back, Atian promised. Waking in the nights that followed, Matt pulled the blanket tighter about his shoulders. It must be very cold in the forest. He could not get Atian out of his mind. What would it be like sitting in a shelter just waiting, growing hungrier every day and more afraid? Because there was no doubt Atian had been afraid. Matt was sure of that. Atian was afraid he might fail, that he might have to return to the village and admit that his Manitou had not appeared. For Atian, this would be a disgrace, a shame that must be terrible if the thought of it had brought fear into his eyes. Even though he dreaded that it would mean the end of all their adventures, Matt hoped that Atian would find his Manitou. And we'll read chapter 21 next time. Until then, it's Tigger says ta-ta for now. Love you guys. Bye-bye.